Do I ever see the show that like the dumbest ways to die? Dehydration is like the dumbest way to get a sickle cell crisis. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Hawa Funka. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a story time about my journey and my life as a sickle cell patient from childhood all the way up until now. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. But um, you all said you wanted to learn more about it. We're just going to talk while I tell you my story. I'm definitely going to be doing my makeup because... I don't want to bore myself or you. Mm -mm, simple, cute, bow. Hit the subscribe button below and become a ninja. Join the game. And without further ado, let's get right into this video. Hi, guys. Welcome. As you know, I am doing a story time about my sickle cell journey and just like my backstory, how sickle cell works and how it affects my life. Yeah, so I'm just going to kind of do my makeup while I talk through this story time just so that I can be you know doing something as I'm speaking and not just talking so y'all kind of watch <laughs> I'm not going to really talk about what I'm doing the products and stuff because I'm be telling you the story but yeah okay so what is sickle cell sickle cell disease or disorder if you may red blood cell disorder it is inherited is a genetic disease so i was born with sickle cell um how does it affect my body so every now and then i'll have these things called sickle cell crisis and sickle cell crisis is basically your blood is really not doing what it's supposed to do like the disease is really attacking your red blood cell it forms these sickle like moon crust shaped blood cells and not full blood cells this makes it hard for the blood to flow properly like down your veins it gets stuck and when it does this it stops oxygen to pump to the organs that it needs to pump to and just cause like blockage or whatever so this caused you to have a lot <laughs> a lot a lot a lot severe pain Actually, if you, the more sickle cell crisis that you have you know the less oxygen that is delivered to your organs and then your organs start to fail and if you have like really 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 bad ones it could shut down like an entire like organ like your brain or whatever and that's what will cause you to pretty much um, pass away I'm going to start doing my makeup and then just really dive into like my story and my journey with a sickle cell I do want to let you know this video is sponsored by Sickle Cell Warrior. Definitely check out my description box. So again, if you have sickle cell or you know someone have sickle cell, this a lot of great information and resources is in this kit. So check out my description box below. Okay. I'm a little slow, so it's kind of hard for me to do my makeup and talk at the same time. So I'm going to do my brows. I'm going to kind of speed this up. My eyebrows never look. Don't talk about me. I tried, okay. As a child with sickle cell, I kind of knew that I had it, but I didn't really know what it was. My mom took really good care of me. Like, I know that I had a lot of doctor's appointments, more than usual, like more than my brother would have his doctor's appointments. I would always go in for like testing, and I took medicine every single day. Like, I'd wake up drink my hot chocolate with my medicine every single morning. I feel like that really helped me because I have a rare case of sickle cell than most people. I can't really explain like <laughs> the details like of the scientific language behind it, but basically most sickle cell patient strands look like this and I have a rare case of my strand look like this and my strand of sickle cell caused me to have less sickle cell crisis than most sickle cell patients but i think that's because of the specialist that my mom used to take me to when i was a kid they did a lot of tests on me i was one of the people whenever vaccines came out i was one of the first people to do the trial and get the vaccine like the chicken pox vaccine i never had chicken pox before because when it first came out 
I was one of the first people to get the chicken pox vaccine. So, and that was um, the case with most of the vaccines for me as a child. The reason why my doctors wanted to keep me up and up to date. I hope y'all don't hear the cicadas, but if y'all do, I can't, nothing I can do about that because they're always on. If you get anything, if you get a common cold, get an infection, if you get chicken pox, it can drive you into a crisis. And like I said before, the more crisis you get, the weaker your health gets. So it was very important for me to be up on my vaccines. This is, I'm talking and I can't do my makeup. <laughs> at the same time. So I didn't have that much sickle cell crisis like without something trigger in it. I remember going to the hospital like if I was to get a common cold like or like a flu or something like that, it would be really bad for me and that's when I would like have to go to the hospital being stayed like overnight and be treated not only for whatever I have but also for my sickle cell. But it didn't happen that much as a kid like I don't remember having a really, really, really abnormal childhood or whatever. I always try to do like normal things. Like my doctor would say, like tell me that I shouldn't do as much physical activities like that can cause me to get hurt or be like around a lot and stuff where I could get sick. I don't know what I'm going all over the place. That was the case for me in middle school all the way up into high school. I was like normal. I did cheerleading, I ran track, I was in gymnastics, did a lot of activities and I never got really, really, really sick. Y'all, to be honest, I didn't really know how sickle cell affected me and how bad it could be until I was an adult. <laughs> because, you know, I had sickle cell as a young child, this was stuff like this was normal to me. So pain was kind of normal to me. I have a high pain tolerance to this day and I always had a high pain tolerance. So I remember a time like I was going to the mall with my friends and we rode the train and we was coming back from the mall and I was in so much pain. Like this is just one story just to give you an idea. So my leg was in so much pain. Like I was like, yo, my leg feel like it's about to fall off. Like it hurts so bad. Like So then when we got off the train, we had went to my other friend's house and I asked them for some medicine, like Tylenol or something. And they gave me some medicine and I took that and it still didn't work. Like the pain was still there. Hours later, I went home. I, you know, took some more pain medicine, like some Tylenol or something. And I remember I was still in so much pain. Like y'all, I didn't think to tell my mom, like, hey mom, you know, I have so much pain in my leg and I don't know what it is. For me, I didn't never want to bother my mom because my mom is from Sierra Leone, West Africa. And her and my dad came to this country like almost 50 years ago. But when they brought us to the country, like basically, well, I was born here, but they brought my sister, older sister here. But basically to start a, you know, a better life for us, um, start a family here and have a better life for us. But you know, it's hard for them to make it. So my dad, he drove a cab and my mom she worked in a hotel as a maid so my mom was always working if she wasn't like working in the hotel like she was doing like other stuff like doing gigs and stuff like she did Mary Kay and she was just like a go-getter so like I know my mom worked a lot and I did not want to bother her ever like I never wanted to bother her so whenever I was like having these crises that I didn't know or realize that I had I never said anything I never said mom I feel like this if I if I would have said something to her, she would have been like, yo, like, that's your, you know, that's your sickle cell. Like, you could get treatment for this. You can go to the hospital and get treatment. And I wouldn't have been in so much pain. I would literally just go to sleep. And sometimes it will be a day, like the pain. Sometimes it will be days. Sometimes it will be weeks. I would just never say anything. I would just go through the pain. <laughs> I didn't start getting real bad like crisis until I was an adult. And what triggered me to have really bad crisis was getting pregnant. So I got pregnant in college. Check out my I didn't know I was pregnant story time. Um, I will link it up here. You definitely want to check that out after you watch this video because I also talk about like crazy stuff that <laughs> went on with my body and that and me being pregnant and having sickle cell and being sick, all of that stuff. So definitely check it out. I was pregnant with my son. In freshman year of college, I was pregnant and I had my son and 
Oh, in the beginning of my pregnancy, before I knew I was pregnant, because I didn't know I was pregnant, I was having crazy pains. Like, it was hurting so bad. I didn't know what it was. Because my sickle cell, like, didn't affect me like this. Like, I didn't know what it was. I just was like, what is this pain? Then when I found out I was pregnant, I still kept having these pains. Not me knowing now, there were Christ. I remember one time my other sister was over my house, and I was like, I'm in so much pain. Like, I don't know what it is. It, like, happens so often. And my sister was like, oh, that's probably just your body, you know, preparing for a baby. Your body's not used to having a baby, so it spreads, it expands, and, you know, do all the things a woman do to create a, a baby. And I was like, okay, that makes sense to me. I was like, okay, that makes sense that, you know, that totally could happen and i'm sure it happens all the time again didn't think didn't do anything just you know winged it out i was probably like seven to eight months into my pregnancy and i had a full-blown crazy is my most probably my most painful crisis back then um that I ever had where i couldn't just be like oh i'm just gonna sleep it off like no bitch it was bad like again watch my story time because i go in detail about that whole day and you know everything that happened but long story short i ended up going to the hospital and you know they ask you questions do you have any this do you have any that blah 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 they do your blood work told them you know i have sickle cell because i know that i have sickle cell but i didn't know too much detail so he's like what kind of sickle cell do you have sickle cell the full-blown disease or do you just have the trait i knew that i had the full-blown disease and then they was like wow <laughs> that explains a lot and that's not good because you should have been getting prenatal care a long time ago you're high risk blah 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 like it was the whole thing it turns out i was having sickle cell crisis and my hemoglobin levels was really 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 low that um i had that a lot throughout my pregnancy with my son and my daughter i had to get blood transfusions blood transfusion is a when they add blood you'll get an iv they'll just give you blood instead i had blood transfers where they completely take most of my blood out like 90 percent of my blood and could give me more blood there's other treatments so typically for a mild case of it was a crisis if i was going to the hospital i'll get treated with iv fluids oxygen and pain medicine is usually like a really strong pain medicine because nothing else works. So it's either like Dilaudid, Percocet, that morphine, things like that that goes through the IV. And so I, at one point in my life, I was addicted to pain medicines. Yes, that's a whole nother story. They, they just treat you for the pain and treat you for your blood to get back regulated. And if it doesn't, then you will have to get a blood transfusion. If it's bad, if it's worse than that, or the blood transfusion doesn't work, then that's when you have to get a blood transfer. Sometimes you may have to get your spleen removed. Sometimes you may need a bone marrow transfer. Fun fact: <laughs> I do not have a spleen. When you're when you have sickle cell type crisis, like I said before, kind of attacks your organs. Like your organs kind of disintegrate 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 organs kind of disintegrate and my spleen did that a long time way before i even really knew what my sickle cell was about and how it worked my spleen probably was gone by the time i was in high school that's a fun fact i do not have a spleen obviously you can live without a spleen i think you got two i don't know don't quote me what are the treatments that you can pretty much do for sickle cell i've never had to have a bone marrow trans um for so if a normal sickle cell patient was to get i'm just throwing a number out there 50 crises a year i would get like half of that like 25 crises a year i'm gonna let that sit right, right quick i've been on medications that's equivalent to like chemotherapy for cancer but like for sickle cell and some of the medications are actually actually the same so they use the same medications for cancer patients on sickle cell patients and stuff i've been on medications before like that but it, some of them made me really sick some of them made my hair fall out some of them made me very constipated i'm not at the point in my life where like I need to be on these medications. It's kind of like to enhance the chances of your lifespan. And they have like um, treatment for sickle cell, like a cure for sickle cell that they came out is still 
and I call it I'm calling it beta mode that's how much of a freaking youtuber I am right beta mode not beta mode but still in trial but people are getting it and it is you know getting rid of their sickle cell completely so some point in my life I'm probably going to get that right now it's in trial so trial that's not I don't even think that's the right word for it y'all know what I'm talking about I'll put it on the screen but I I just made my chin look super big and it looks dumb. Why does it look like that? I'll be starting that treatment soon. I will have to go in to my doctor's office or to the center. And I will get an IV treatment every week. I did get a trial run of it because my doctor wanted to make sure that, you know, I took well to it. I may be, you know, taking you all along the ride. Like I may be vlogging my experience when I get that done. Treatment is pretty much like a long-term treatment before the step of actually getting it fully cured. It's supposed to like basically make you live longer. And how it does that is like if I get 25 crises a year, it's supposed to lessen it. I, about 50% which is a lot better in my opinion like what else I gotta tell y'all now that I'm adult and stuff and now that I had two kids I've been having you know sickle cell crisis and I've been having more issues with it you know they told me that I shouldn't have any more kids because the more kids you have the more you know you're growing another human body, a human being in your body, so they're taking up a lot of your nutrients and like energy and a lot of stuff that I really need to like power myself so that my organs can keep going. Think of being pregnant as having the flu times ten. Being pregnant will trigger a lot of them. If your mother and your father have the sickle cell trait one of four of their kids could have sickle cell so my parents knew that i was gonna have sickle cell because both of them have the trait and they had three kids and i was the last kid but anyways i have the disease so the percent is different deshaun my husband does not have sickle cell trait but one of my kids could still get the disease so like when i was pregnant they would ask you like they would ask you like do you want to have like a test, like the little biopsy test or whatever it's called to make to make sure that your kid doesn't have sickle cell because then they kind of like, and you got to have to make a decision like, do I want to have a kid that has sickle cell or do I want to terminate pregnancy? But like, I never got that test or whatever because I was like, I'm going to have my kid no matter what. I guess that's a selfish way of thinking. I don't know. It depends on who you act. But for me, I'm like, I'm going to have my kid no matter what. But both of my kids have the trait. None of my kids have the disease. That's why my doctors don't want me to have any more kids because they're like, you know, there's still a chance if you have more kids, they could have it. And also, there's a chance, you know, that, you know, it messes up my body every time I get pregnant and I'm high risk and it's a lot of more other shit that go into it. It's so crazy. A lot of my close, a lot of my friends, there's some family members, there's a lot of people that don't really know that I have sickle cell like because I'm like a very private person and also I don't really like to, I don't like to be, I don't like one for people to feel sorry for me and I too don't want to kind of burden people I just don't like feeling like a burden so i don't really like share that part of my life too much and plus i have it and i go through it so i don't really want to talk about it like that i just take it day by day i try to be as healthy as possible let me tell you the stuff that can trigger you to have a crisis stress could trigger you to have a sickle cell crisis flying on a plane change of altitude could cause you to have a sickle cell crisis change of weather like if you go from really cold temperatures to really warm temperatures or really warm temperatures to really cold temperatures that can really trigger you to have a sickle cell crisis again getting sick getting any type of infection colds or flus all of that stuff could trigger you to have sickle cell crisis i might be leaving out some stuff but that's the gist of it yes come in 
but like when I go on vacations I know to like be prepared that I may have a trick of sickle cell crisis but I also like make sure I'm drinking a lot of water like if I am drinking making sure I'm staying hydrated and then drinking and drinking water in between sometimes I don't drink enough or sometimes I forget I'm doing too much sometimes just doing too much can trigger you to have a sickle cell crisis and the being dehydrated could trigger you to have a sickle cell crisis it's like the smallest things that could trigger, trigger you but I just try to just take care of myself as much as I can. I can treat myself at home sometimes, especially now being in the pandemic. I hate going to the hospital. Like I literally like dread that shit. I would literally be in pain and try to like take care of it at home because I don't like going to the hospital. And then also like every time I go to the hospital, they like, you know, they, you'll take pain medicine. I was addicted to pain medicine at one point. So I don't want to have that strong ass medicine going through my IV all the time. Like imagine being being like on crack and then you go through remission, but then you need crack in order to, you know, heal some type of illness you have. So it's like, bro, like I'm not saying I was ever like addicted to the point where I had to go to like rehab or anything like that, but I it's it's damn near and I don't I don't like that so I sometimes fight to go to the hospital like I literally went to the hospital very recently like a week ago from a crisis I think that crisis was caused by me just being dehydrated and doing too much like I just came from home from a trip and then I went to go help my parents. I wasn't keeping up with myself. Like I wasn't keeping up with my health. I wasn't eating right. I was just eating on the go or not eating at all. And all of that stuff is like not good. I try to fight it. I try not to go to the hospital. And usually if I know that I'm having a crisis now and I need to go to the hospital, I will call my um, hematologist and I will let him know and he will let the emergency know that the emergency room know that I'm on my way and then when I come I could they'll put me in a room like as soon as I come but on the weekends I can't do that because the office is closed so you be in a waiting room forever with all the virus people so while I was in a hospital I had put up a post on my Instagram if you're not following me on Instagram go ahead and follow me I had put up a post, not a post, a story on my Instagram that says Sickle Cell Warrior. And then a lot of people, I got a lot of like comments and DMs like, oh my God, I didn't know you had Sickle Cell. You do content on Sickle Cell. You really should talk about it. A lot of people don't know about it. Even my husband, when we first date, started dating, especially when I got pregnant and I was going through things I was going through, he didn't really understand it. He thought it was something like, like arthritis. I'm just gonna compare it to arthritis. Like I don't think you could die from arthritis, can you? Like it's not chronic. He didn't he didn't know how serious it was. Went to like premarital or whatever. We talked about that and the lady was basically telling him that he needs to do his research on it to really like understand it and see how serious it is. Because I would get mad at him sometimes because it would be so serious and he'll just be like, Oh, you'll be alright or just sleep it off or whatever. But he didn't mean anything by it. He literally just didn't know. So now he really un understands it. So he's like, you need to go to the hospital. Like, well, who are you making me go? But anyways, I just never talked about it publicly like this. And I'm just hoping that this video can help somebody. And again, this video is sponsored by Sickle Cell Warrior Kit. So definitely check it out. In the description box so if you have sickle cell or you know somebody has sickle cell it has like resources and it. it's a pretty cool kit if you ask me and it also supports me and my channel and yeah I don't want anybody treating me differently after that after this so don't do that but definitely let me know in the comments if you would like more content like this if you'd like me to talk about it more I'm not gonna turn my channel to how the sickle cell girl but I do want to be able to help others. I do want to be able to share that part of me a little bit. I do want to be able to provide information and resources if I can. 
and we'll answer you any questions that you may have so definitely in the comments let me know if you have any questions i may answer it directly to you i might answer it in a video i did when i was in a hospital recently i was trying to document it what who the fuck does that <laughs> Yeah, I don't understand. The pain is worse than contractions. Like, I'm a mom, so I felt contractions before. And toothaches. Toothaches fucking hurt. The pain is worse than toothpaste or maybe equivalent all over your body. And my dumb man is trying to document it. Like, I'm trying to film. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell. So you'll know every time I post. And if I do post the video or whatever, then you'll be the first to know. If you are watching this and you have sickle cell, have a loved one that have sickle cell, tips I will give is stay hydrated. <laughs> Dehydrated is the, y'all ever see the show that like the dumbest ways to die? Dehydration is like the dumbest way to get a sickle cell crisis. Like, like that's something that you, look. It's dumb. I'd rather travel and live my best life and get fucked up and get a sickle cell crisis at least it's worth it than just not drinking water like that's dumb and getting a sickle cell crisis so definitely stay hydrated stay active and eat healthier like choose healthier options choose healthier options you don't have to eat healthy all the damn time like no but they definitely like stay active like i feel like the healthier healthier you are the better your health will be the less diseases you'll catch the less infections you'll have yeah everybody should be doing that anyway even if you don't have super so okay this might sound crazy but this is just my personal opinion i would recommend using natural medicines to treat your pain there's a lot of different holistic ways you can use to treat your pain over pain medicine because i feel like the pain medicine that they give us is very very strong and again you can get addicted to it just like crack it's just not healthy. You put in chemicals in your body. So sometimes I do try to, you know, take care of myself, self-medicate at home. I may use CBD products. Next thing I would say is like, live your life to the fullest. I have sickle cell. I'm not, I can't drink. Or, oh, I have sickle cell. I have to stay in the house all the time. Or, oh, I have sickle cell. Like, I can't play football or I can't be a cheerleader or I can't do this. No, live your life. Do what you're doing to do. Just take care of yourself and just know and learn and know your body so if you can't do it your body says no 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 you know that your body's saying no listen to it but if you can go for it but in general just do whatever makes you happy because who wants to be sick sick and depressed and sad all the time like nobody so i would definitely say live your life to the fullest i always also would say pray whoever you pray to i don't know if you're christian buddha whatever but definitely pray faithless is he who says farewell when the road darkens so you definitely just want to stay faithful you just want to just pray like sometimes i'll be about to i feel like i'm about to die i'm like please god don't take me out right now i got this to do i got this to do i'm trying to do this i'm trying to do this please give me this strength the last tip that i have for you like your parent to someone that has sickle cell be mindful of who they date when they get of age or who they you know have a baby with on the first date that's i don't care what nobody say that should be on the checklist to ask questions do you have sickle cell do you have sickle cell do you have sickle cell or do you have the trait that's a question to ask you teach them hey you gotta find out if this person is your sibling it's like no not <laughs> that too but you gotta find out if this person have sickle cell or have the trait because it's, it's it's important information that you need to know that would suck to get to some get to know somebody you dating them for like five years and then y'all ready to have a kid start a family blah, blah blah and then you find out they have the sickle cell trait and now you just made your life like 10 times heavier you know what i mean so that's my last and final tip and that's it let me put some lipstick on so i can close out this video Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into my channel. If you check out my Sickle Cell Warrior Kit below, thank you so much for that. I appreciate it a lot. If you like this video, definitely give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to answer my questions that I asked you in the video in the comments below. Hope you like my look. Mm, 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 mm. Check out another video of mine. Check out my story times, all of that. And, and I'll catch y'all in my next video. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you. See you later. Mwah.